This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. We may be able to finish Yumiko's route next week. Again, have no idea how much longer it's going to go on for. I kind of like the direction this route's gone in, though. Hmm. Very nice. I, we, can, we can go on for a little bit longer, but I do eventually need to wrap it up and have, head to bed. As I've grown more comfortable in my job, free time's actually gotten harder to come by. I'd been attempting to do my work quietly and keep my head down, but it seems that's a rare trait among youngsters these days, earning me unint unintended recognition from my superiors. And I ended up being promoted to the supervisor of a small work team for, with five to six men. Normally this would be something worth celebrating, but right now the goal is not to stand out, even in good ways. We may have to consider moving to a different location if I start getting ahead in life, despite myself. <laughs> you might be the only person who's not trying to gun for a promotion. My days off are often spent uh, on chores and housework. It's mainly cleaning and washing, stockpiling basic preservable food, and investigating the area as a precaution for the worst case scenario. Lots of housewife style labor, except for that last one. Yumiko helps out as well, of course, but the girl had a pretty sheltered upbringing. I'm getting the idea she isn't naturally dexterous, either. Even pretty simple jobs tend to give her some trouble. In any case, we begin our work early in the morning today according to routine, and it's roughly two in the afternoon by the time we're finished. Yumiko? Ooh, she's smiling. Is that book really that interesting? Having wrapped up my work for the day, I inquire about the novel Yumiko has been reading intently. I think the reason for that should be pretty obvious. Excuse me. I'm going over to our potential escape routes in case of an emergency. Hard to say how practically useful repeatedly reviewing this will, will prove, but it's got to be better than doing nothing at all. Certainly we've nestled ourselves down in the home turf of the West Sudamoto Railway Company, a bitter enemy of the East Beach Group since the pre-war era. It's safe to say Sakaki Michiaki won't be openly looking for cooperation in resolving his family squabble. He's not eager to show corporate rivals any sign of weakness. East Beach will tread lightly around here. This low-lying area of eastern Tokyo is particularly dense and tangled, and we're keeping a very low profile. I doubt private detectives will be able to track us down that easily. But since this location's ideal, it might stand out as a possibility to a competent investigator. Tracing a number of lines along our escape routes, I picture the movements of enemies haven't quite yet materialized. That's so. Thought I saw you smiling a little, though. That's impressive. I'm not under the illusion that I completely understand Yumiko just because we're in a relationship now, but I didn't think her instincts were that good. You just said that it was ridiculous, didn't you? Or is the book more suitable for general audiences? Wow. What are you talking about? Instead of a response, she silently pushes the open book out in front of my face. <laughs> Guess that's how it goes with library books sometimes. Still, what a nasty little prank to pull. Sorry about that. <laughs> I should have flipped through it first, but the book had a pretty good reputation, so I figured it would be alright. I won't make the same mistake again. Promise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're gonna get found eventually. Like, uh, this is obviously... This is obviously building towards this goal. Something's going to happen. Presumably we're going to get found. Either that or this is the longest epilogue ever. Reading, virtual, reading is virtually the only entertainment available to Yumiko under our current circumstances. I feel generally, genuinely bad about letting someone ruin it for her like this. <laughs> what? Something to say? Yeah, for what it's worth. Might as well read something decent if you're going to read, right? Uh-oh. Oh, like what? 
that means that there's something. Curtly deflecting the question, Yumiko again returns her focus to the novel. Yumiko? You sure you're not enjoying that book? No reason. Well, honestly, it's because she seems to be in a good mood for some reason. Maybe that note was actually a prank or a red herring, and you just hit some clever twist in the plot you never saw coming. <laughs> Thought you said it wasn't bad. Not much point hunting for foreshadowing, then. In that case, what's she enjoying so much? I don't get it at all. While we're talking, mind if I make one small observation? Wasn't sure whether I should mention this, but you're weighing me down, Yumiko, in a physical sense. Yumiko's been using my lap as her reading chair for some time now. I'm not just talking about today, either. Ever since our physical relationship began, she's made a habit of unceremoniously plopping herself down on top of me to read one of her books, not bothering to ask her permission first. Come to think of it, I suppose this would be the only thing that's really changed about our daily routine after we made love. I mean, watched Dragon Tales together. Yumiko wasn't quite satisfied with the explanation I offered regarding my romantic history, so I've been quietly letting her do as she pleases, but this seemed like a good opportunity to finally say something. Oh, wow, alright. Alright! With his brief reply, my objection is completely eliminated. Yeah? Is what a bother? Hmm. But only a few moments later, Yumiko's haughty expression gives way to something <laughs> something a great deal more uneasy. No, it doesn't really bother me. No, I was just saying you're fat. I mean, what? I was thinking it might be a good opportunity to ask why you're always sitting on me. Come to think of it, I guess it actually feels a little pleasant, if anything. Yeah. Yes, really. This childish line of questioning prompts a sudden realization. I thought you'd been laying on the overbearing attitude a little thick lately. Maybe we're just trying to hide your embarrassment? The girl doesn't respond. But her face makes me think I might have hit the bullseye. So then, Yumiko's been bluffing all this time, acting confident to cover up her timidity, watching my reactions out of the corner of her eye, secretly swinging back and forth between happiness and fear? By the time my thoughts get this far, I'm already petting Yumiko's head. Sorry about that. Determined to give the charming little coward some reassurance, I ignore her abashed expression and repeat the motion. Whoa. Well, that's the first time you've called me that in a while. That day I made one request of Yumiko. She'd become an irreplaceable individual to me, so I asked her to use my name just as I use hers. Yumiko hasn't called me Cosmikun since then, but I guess the alternative still felt a little awkward. She's mostly dodged the issue by using pronouns. I wasn't really upset or anything, but I have to admit it makes me feel a little lonesome at times. Was it deliberate? You really think I'd do something that cruel? Yes. <laughs> See, Yuji, that, literally, that one stupid decision, that is going to follow you for the rest of your life. At least as long as you stay with Yumiko. My apologies. You're right, I'm a heartless monster. Can't believe I didn't even notice how much all this was bothering her. In retrospect, maybe JB was somewhat justified in referring to me as a menace to all womankind. Well, that was just... You're still a beginner, so I was trying not to be too pushy. Because I wouldn't be able to stop myself. Yeah, there is relationship drama. What? You're one high-handed woman. She lets the words fly carelessly. The cool-headed Yumiko I used to know is still there, but with these hints of anxiety and flashes of newfound boldness in the mix, somehow or other she's turning into an undeniably cute young lady. So in other words, you're up for it? 
<laughs> Throwing the, the sarcasm back at him. What? No good after all? Why do we have to wait until night? I fail to see why that's a problem. A bath, is it? We have to economize on the water bills as well, so we've restricted ourselves to a single bath at night each. Normally I'd just tell her to get in right now, but under the current circumstances, it is a legitimate reason for the delay. I got news for you guys. We don't... I'm not going to say we don't care about that, but we're impressed by a lot. Maybe because of all the reading she's been doing lately. You look at phrases this in an oddly poetic way. Well, it's definitely an in-character sort of thought either way. You're still the same old Yumiko at heart, aren't you? Nope. A wry smile spreads across my face. Suppose I'll have to respect Yumiko's wishes on this one. Alright then, tonight it is. And once again, we fall silent and return to our idle reading time. Or, such was the plan. Not sure what you're talking about. Well, yeah, this was the map that belonged to Dora the Explorer. Of course not. It's just a map. It's THE map. A rarity for Yuji. I see. Suddenly I understand why Yumiko's been in such a good mood all this time. That's got nothing to do with the map. It's a natural side effect of having you next to me. Aw, that's cute. Heh. <laughs> It's not easy to put into words, but right now I feel... fulfilled. Every day's happy enough that I expect fiends to fall apart catastrophe at, <laughs> catastrophically at any moment, just as JB keeps warning they might. But for now, so long as the situation remains stable, I want to try and enjoy our time together. For Yumiko's sake as well as mine. She's never had much in the way of ordinary happiness. Surely God won't mind her indulging in a little sweetness, now that she finally has the chance. With that argument as a shield, I try my best to erase the ever-present trickle of anxiety from my mind. Yay! We skipped the next sex scene. Wonderful. Sorry about that. In the drowsy, peaceful time after, I quietly apologize. Yumiko stirs slightly against my arm, currently serving as her pillow. Seems I'm pretty dense when it comes to the subtleties. It's always been a weakness of mine, but I ended up making you anxious over nothing. Wrecked! I see. Wrecked! Wow! <laughs> I honestly don't even mind. He deserves it. Right, right. Yumiko's real thoughts leak out in a cute little mutter. I have to stifle a wry laugh. Is that right? I've got a lot of things to apologize for. Oh, why? How about you both apologize for the stuff you each did wrong? The words slip quietly from Yumiko's mouth. I don't know what exactly she's remembering right now, but still. You don't have a thing to be sorry for, Yumiko. As I think I've said once or twice already. Mm. Not a single thing. We're both here because we chose to be. Oh. Am I wrong? Mm. Yumiko nods lightly. <laughs> That's better. Apologizing doesn't suit you, Yumiko. Gratitude works much better. And venomous insults, best of all. <laughs> yeah, you could have. Just a joke. Oof. My apologies. That's true. If you're if you're a couple, you can't go overboard with the teasing, bro. Sorry, can't help myself. Before this troubling line of conversation could go any further, I abruptly changed the topic. Hey, Yumiko. There's some place you want to go? Now that I think about it, we haven't really gone out together yet. 
I mean, it's probably going to be a little difficult while we're living like this, but I'd still like to know. Oh. Theme park. Something wrong? Her voice is bashful, but also oddly reproachful. What's the problem? Uh, is that a ridiculous... Is it that ridiculous a place? <laughs> Yumiko pushes herself up off the futon and... There's some reason you're wringing my neck. Or should I have said this? There's some reason you're wringing my neck. Well, it's not like she's really strangling me. Yet. Yumiko's fingers are t uh, twined gingerly around my neck in a somewhat menacing fashion. That's all. That's not good. Come on. Don't you trust me at all? Don't look so concerned. I'm not going to mock you for being a little embarrassed. Come on, where do you want to go? Let's hear it. <laughs> hmm? I knew it! I knew she'd bring that up again. <laughs> Even in the dark room, I can clearly see Yumiko's face go bright red. Her eyebrows arch violently as her eyes fill with tears. Also, she's strangling me. On the whole, I'm getting the impression she might be slightly upset. Ouch. Come on. The idea of you in an amusement park is just... Oh. <laughs> Don't be a jerk, Yuji. Let's go to Legoland! Yumiko. I recall the story she told me under the bridge that rainy summer evening. Oh yeah, that little story. For years, she clung desperately to her quote-unquote family, only to be betrayed again and again. In the end, the girl gave up all of her hopes. She armed her body and mind with blades against a hostile world. But right now, Yumiko's found someone she can believe in. Or at least, she's trying very hard to convince herself she has. And what she wants most from that person, from me, is exactly what her family could not give her. Laughing at that was a bit much, even as a joke. Yeah, alright. Let's go to an amusement park. Yeah. Don't know when we'll be able to pull it off, but I'll make it happen. That's a promise as well. Hey, how about a little warning before you jump all over me? Also, what are the neighbors thinking? Like, if this is like a tiny one pla place that's all by itself, then fine. But if this is like an apartment where we're sharing it with neighbors, they're like, man, that Yuji guy, he's like laughing uproariously, and then he he's talking like a girl? This is weird. Night Bites is now playing Ark Survival Evolved. I'm so glad that the whole world knows that now. Yumiko throws herself against me like an excited child. <laughs> Not a problem, I had it down as Yumiko-style cuddling. <laughs> hey, don't lick my neck! <laughs> this is getting too lewd. Too lewd for Artie's channel. Really, it tickles, cut it out. <laughs> uh-huh, I'm not afraid. Not afraid to go away. <sighs> Two people who had always been alone and slowly moved closer to each other, seeking out something they'd been missing. It was a very happy time. But even so, the stress of a life will constantly one misstep from disaster would gradually take its toll. And Yumiko and I were too distracted by those intoxicating moments of happiness to notice it creeping up on us. Okay. Alright. Don't picture it. I feel like at this point, that is just kind of the perfect spot to stop. Just based on the dialogue there, I think that that seems like it's kind of the perfect place to end the stream. My voice is starting to go, and I'm also getting very tired, so I will probably head to bed. I will not be streaming again this weekend. I will be busy, wrapped up with other things, so... It was fun streaming this tonight, though. This was definitely a very, very fun stream, for sure. Defi like, this was definitely one of my favorite Grisea streams I've done. Now, there, it had its share of cringy moments, it's true. But on the whole, I'd say that the story for Yumiko's Root is getting very, very good. Like, I, I like having those moments of, like, it's just us and Yumiko, and it's a lot more wholesome. I know there was, again, some cringy stuff. You're gonna get that. But 
yeah, on the whole, it was very enjoyable and some extremely memorable moments here. Yeah, thank you all for joining in. It was great talking with you all. See ya. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It, it feels weird streaming this late at night, honestly. <laughs> I didn't even, before I even know it, like, wow, it's bedtime. Wow. What's next after Fruit of Grisea? Um, good, good question. I will have to think about that. I know what's next after Hollow Knight is Backyard Baseball, but... Yeah, I'll have to ponder that. So I will I believe I will continue Grisea next weekend, starting on Saturday, and Hollow Knight will return on Monday. And hopefully we can finish that up pretty quickly. Because we're making some great progress in all of this. Alright. Have a great night, everybody. God bless. Hope you enjoy your weekend. <laughs>